Hello and welcome to the FF News Virtuarina. I'm your host, Doug McKenzie, and on today's very special podcast, we're going to be learning how banks can survive, but not only survive, but thrive in today's day and age. Now, with me, I have some very special guests who have typified that ability to go and thrive. So I want to say first off, a big hello to Adelina Russo from Terminos. Adelina, how are you doing here today? I'm good. Thank you, Doug. It's great to be here finally. Well, it's absolutely brilliant to have you and Temenos on the show again. So Adelina, for our viewers who might not be aware, could you tell us a bit more about your role at Temenos and Temenos themselves? Absolutely, with pleasure. Um, I uh, lead the solutions marketing team uh, for digital banking, for our digital banking propositions at um, at Temenos. And uh, as um, as everyone uh, hopefully knows, at least by looking at the background behind me, <laughs> Temenos is everyone's banking platform. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, to discussing more uh, with you on uh, on this uh, on this podcast here today or webcast here today. Yeah, it should be absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Adelina. And and also we're joined by Fabio Galicetti from Credem. Fabio, thank you so much for joining too. How are you doing? Thank you too. It's a, it's a pleasure for me to, to join. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, very interesting for us to share our experience with, uh, with you uh, and uh, and uh, yeah. I, I hope uh, it, uh, it will be interesting also for uh, our audience. Definitely. Now, Fabio, I've got to ask then, you know, could you tell our, our audience a bit more about your role at Credem and Credem itself too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working for Credem in the in the business in the commercial business unit, and uh, I lead the uh, how can I say the, the digital and organization direction for all the all the business units of of Credem, uh, of Credem, and. Uh, um, in this case, my particular focus will uh, in the responsibility of uh, the evolution of our digital platforms and digital channels. Yeah, now I think that is going to be a major talking point in today's virtual arena. Yeah, we're going to be looking at how you can take advantage of those digital platforms. But also we have joining us Lorenzo Villa from Credem2. Lorenzo, how are you doing? I think Fabio has covered Credem, but could you tell us a bit more about yourself and, and your role at Credem2, please? Yes, hi, hi Doug. Thank you to, to invite me here. In Credem, I work in the IT and I'm leading the, the team that is managing uh, uh, what we call digital channel. So in this case, mobile application, internet banking, public sites and, uh, and so on. And uh, so I work with my team trying to improve <laughs> and offer uh, a good service and uh, or a better, I hope, service uh, through this digital channel. Absolutely brilliant. And, and it's good to have that that tech focus that we're definitely going to need for today. Now, I think it's fair to say over the last maybe three or so years, the world has changed quite a bit um, and at a pace probably never before seen. So with that in mind, I want to ask Fabio, if I could come to you first, um, how has the role of a bank changed? Is it you know, before it's just a savings account for many retail customers? Has that role changed for a lot of people? Yeah, Doug, it, it, it's a it's a very interesting uh, point and a tough question for her to start with our, <laughs> to start our no easy questions here for our, our conversation. I, I think that the role of bank has definitely changed, and it's now still developing. Uh, in which in which direction? Uh, surely uh, towards an even wider response to the needs of customer needs that uh, have uh, already evolved uh, with the pandemic. They have increased, they have changed. And uh, in addiction, uh, they are needs that uh, are now also non-financial, as well as related to traditional supply and everyday service. The evolution is very, is very strong. Now, I think being omnichannel is more and more for banks an, a necessity on one end, servicing uh, serving sorry serving customer in a full digital way by definition on the other end uh, also servicing customers in a in a traditional business model in a human full human uh, 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 business model all connected with an even even stronger digital environment and the growing up of a technology uh, and this involves a strong change of approach, processes, technologies, and in my opinion, also mindsets. 
Uh, I mean, Doug, looking into the future, going forward, I think the, the, the direction is marked and very, very bold. We must think these, uh, uh, that these omnichannel models will be more and more pushed and strong for me and supported by an evolution in an open banking way, uh, open finance, open innovation, in particular for retail banking, as you, as you mentioned, uh, uh, for example, in lending product. All of that thinking about the, prof the profitability of this model. Uh, the customer satisfaction and the challenges that come from a very strong competitive, how can I say, a competitive arena. Yeah. Uh, because the market context with many new players playing this game in, in this court and, and it's not easy to, to remain. Yeah, it is. It's one of those things where I, I like to think of it as uh, you've got to fly while, uh, you know, if you're a pilot, you are flying while also having to change the engine at the same time. It's yeah. such a difficult thing to do, but when you do it, the journey is incredible. And, and, and Lorenzo, if I could come to you to speak about that journey, um, maybe I think it's fair to say a lot of institutions started to do it maybe five years ago. Um, but then we've obviously seen the acceleration that I mentioned in, in the introduction. So how can not only traditional banks, but also digital only banks um, look to these digital customer needs? And what are these new, what are the challenges that financial institutions now face in that digital environment that Fabio has, has painted for us? I believe that uh, the bigger challenges are related to mainly the different nature of these new competitors, of the nature of the different histories. Uh, because as you said, uh, we are talking a lot uh, about uh, companies that uh, more than 10 years ago doesn't exist. We are talking about new company or spin-off of the existing one. And uh, especially in our case, we are uh, a bank that has more than 100 years of history. So wow. uh, I think that now uh, the world uh, put in the same arena very uh, uh, different competitors. And uh, so what does it mean? It means that if you are a, let me say, new company, uh, if you are a young company, usually uh, you have less technology limitation because uh, if you started your business 10 years ago, probably you don't have legacy systems, so you have less limitation. Uh, in many cases, we see a, a different cultural approach because uh, uh, also how this uh, new competitor has arrived in the arena yeah. has been different from, from more traditional financial institutions. So this has an impact also in the culture. And sometimes I believe that there is also a difference uh, in the constraints by the, due by the regulatory because uh, we are talking about financial institution, but sometimes we have a competition also with companies that are not financial institution. And so also this aspect is very relevant for us because, uh, uh, let me say, uh, we are playing in the same game, but the rules sometimes are different from someone yeah. or someone. And so uh, you have to consider also this aspect. Uh, from other aspect, I think that if we are focused on the purely financial aspect, it's possible that they have less uh, experience and sometimes also uh, less co competencies respect the uh, more uh, classical financial institution. But on the other side, typically they have uh, more skill uh, about uh, the digital experience, the digital channel. And so they can uh, have a compensation between uh, uh, less experience on the financial, but uh, a better uh, a better expertise to provide the digital experience. And so uh, they approach in a different way the, the competition. Yeah. I th and I think that finally, there is another aspect that uh, is not tech, but it's, uh, it's not less important for me. Uh, and that is that in the majority of these cases of this new competitor, we see uh, an organization that is uh, uh, more lean respect to the traditional inst financial institution. And uh, having a lean organization means uh, uh, be faster in take decision, uh, have a, a higher speed in uh, take decision and produce an outcome. 
and reach an outcome. So uh, I, I think that is an, another aspect that could be an advantage for this new competitor. Uh, and then it's something that we have to, to, to take care because, uh, okay, we have to do something because we are, every, as Fabi said, in the same arena. So uh, it's another aspect that uh, we have uh, to, to not forget. Yeah, I, I think that's so fascinating to, you know, uh, banking has obviously been, uh, it's been an industry which has pr predominantly been just run by traditional institutions with with hundreds of years of history. But now the the ecosystem is not a level playing field. As you mentioned, Lorenzo, you've got companies that are effectively offering up banking um products but aren't banks themselves and some are, aren't beholden to the same regulations and the same rules now adelina then i'd love to get your perspective because one thing i know about temenos is you can kind of help these institutions level that playing field because not everyone can be a tech company as well as a bank so is, am i fair to say that's where temenos comes in um, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the aspects that, that we obviously focus on, but um, I um, it might be a, a bit surprising, but I'll offer um, a, a, the consumer perspective, if I may, um, because I think um, we were referring to the past two, three years in particular, but in general, um, beyond the numbers and the, the currencies that, that people think about when, when they say banking, banking and financial decisions are eminently emotional decisions. Yeah. We all, it, the money is essentially a, you know, a means to, to achieve, you know, personal or, or professional goals at the end of the day. And therefore, the way we see it is that emotions play a huge role in the decisions that we make every day, big and small and, you know, important and, and, and menial. Um, choosing where we bank and how we bank, I don't think there's any exception in, in doing that. Um, and therefore, I think for banks to recognize that fact and therefore treat customers as unique individuals uh, will translate in that long term loyalty and trust that I think um, everybody craves for at this particular point in time. Um, as more customers bank in a digital way, particularly driven by the acceleration of the past three um, three years or so. Uh, data obviously becomes key uh, to uh, to customer and to, and to employee success and to the you know the colleagues in that works in uh, that work in banks. Um, and Temenos is here to create those outstanding digital banking experience to to help banks really make the most and create those emotional connections with um, with uh, with every customer. Um, at the end of the day, um, Maybe it's my it's my simple mind, but I think of it as a as a rule of three. To really become an empathetic bank in this day and age, you really look at at meeting the customers where they are. And Lorenzo has already talked about the omni-channel approach that is so so critical these days. But also you have an opportunity to make it personal and insightful with an analytics and AI and explainable AI embedded in, in what you do at every at every point of the interaction. And also, and I think it's something that Fabio has, has touched upon a little bit earlier, going beyond banking and looking at, at all the adjacent products uh, and the community of embedded finance type of uh, type of services that you can offer on your platform by going beyond that, that banking experience that you offer. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And, and Adelina, I, I, I can't believe, you know, agree with you more that the we, we sometimes just segregate finance into its own separate thing. No one wants to talk about money, but actually everything that you do when it comes to banking is a very important decision and it's a very human decision. And I think we're starting to see that come out more, um, especially now that banking products that were typically hidden away to certain users is, are now being democratized to everyone. But also by that same notion, the tech has to catch up with it. And Lorenzo, I think, you know, I really appreciate your insight here that, you know, we've talked about, Adelina talked about the cultural changes that have to, to change within banking to create a kind of level playing field, but there's also has to be a strategic level, an organizational level that changes. So what does a financial institution have to do on a technological level to keep up with the changing pace of the industry? Yeah, I, I think that uh, on the tech level, uh, we have to look what our competitors are doing uh, to have a strategy to understand where we want to go and uh, especially i think that uh, as i mentioned before we have to fill some gaps so uh, 
we have to be conscious of the gap that uh, uh, more traditional institution has uh, from uh, the, the new companies and sometimes we have to overcome some constraints so what does it mean in, uh, practically i think that uh, we have to adopt or improve the the technical capabilities because uh, it's uh, fundamental to guarantee an higher speed in the software development and deployment so this means uh, uh, in my opinion uh, moving to cloud and uh, on a container technology as much as possible. Uh, I think that uh, this is not necessary on the 100% of your infrastructure, but uh, uh, when it's possible, it's better. And this is my point of view. Uh, we have to adopt tools to improve the, 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 the software delivery pipelines. And uh, m more generally speaking, we have to improve, continuously improve the productive process because uh, uh, we have to be faster in uh, produce something, to pro produce a service, to release a function, uh, to try a change uh, and so on. So everything has to be uh, ready to manage all uh, this, uh, this evolution uh, as, as fast, as quickly as possible, because yeah. uh, of course you have no, you can waste time waiting for something or waiting from uh, someone else. Yeah. Uh, infrastructure are very uh, crucial in my opinion because uh, we have to guarantee an elevated uh, level of service because the, the uh, availability uh, today I believe that is a must. Uh, Every day people uh, use a service, not financial, but in general digital services that are always up running. Uh, sometimes I ask my colleagues to, to remember me the last time that the Google homepage uh, has ne was uh, not uh, uh, up uh, or uh, has some problem and probably nobody still remember that day. Never. So, yeah. uh, exactly. And, and so that is where we have to go. Uh, when I talk about a strategy, I think that we have some, we have to set some pillar and, uh, and on that try to build our uh, our evolution. For course, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, to stay updated uh, about uh, the digital technology. I'm talking about technology, about, I'm talking about uh, skill, uh, because at the end, uh, our goal uh, is to provide a great customer experience, and this could not be possible uh, without the proper skills. So uh, yeah. I think that you have to build an environment, you have to evolve your environment, uh, making possible uh, all that all the things that uh, your competitor are able to do and so you have not uh, to 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 leave a gap it's yeah. not possible i think that uh, no. no you have a gap in that. definitely and we're, we're starting to see that obviously the margins being reduced in banking but you know as a result that the customer at the end is ultimately the winners fabio how can a bank look at these changes to a bank's revenue stream and balance that kind of customer acquisition while also retaining customers, while also changing both the back end and the front end. It sounds like an unwinnable task, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Doug. Uh, I, I think uh, a few minutes ago, uh, how can I say, Adelina said uh, probably the most two important words of uh, the new way of banking. Uh, she said emotional decision from from customers if yeah. i understood well adelina but i think uh, uh, following your question doug i think it's really important to have uh, a real interesting and useful concrete and useful offer for customers and omnichannel as well because the offer must be now omnichannel yeah uh, they are key factors because I believe, I strongly believe that customers today seek uh, for, firstly the efficiency of a digital self and smart offer. Secondly, they also looking for uh, a financial partner, but not, not, all, not also a financial partner. Uh, I think more maybe a life partner, a sort of a life coach following the emotional decisions uh, as, as Adelina said. Uh, that can follow them even in the most complex and, and, stru and structured needs. Uh, I think this is definitely a key driver, a, re a real reason why to look for a bank 
if you are uh, if you are a, a customer uh, this approach uh, i think this approach can activate also a strong engagement in customer look customers looking for an offer uh, a promise that can lead to a stable relationship over time uh, based on a strong loyalty uh, all this if uh, we are uh, able to um, to follow uh, how can i say a, a customer centric culture and approach uh, an excellence in service and, and a complete uh, pleasant smart uh, experience also leads the customers who became the first ambassador of the brand and i think uh, 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 for me uh, business speaking uh, uh, is uh, one of the most, uh, how can I say, most uh, fantastic goals yeah. where, where, where your customers are your first ambassadors. Yeah, and I love that, uh, you know, I've been hearing this from all three of you, that you're looking at banking through a lens of your customers, rather than just having an institution that's been around for hundreds of years and relying on that institutional presence, you're actually looking at the end customer and realizing banking is a product, banking services are a product, you need to look after the customer and your customers are going to succeed from that. And I, I love hearing this. This is a very, very refreshing perspective. Now, one thing obviously that you've start we've started to see you, know, you obviously you can see in in um for instance various different organizations around the world from australia singapore to to north america and europe we've seen spin-off banks start to happen from from traditional institutions because these institutions have noticed that actually you do have to look after the customer and you can't rely on that old old style institutional um, branding before. So Lorenzo, what advantages do these new spin-off banks have when they enter this high pressure digital environment? Well, I, I think that from a, a technical point of view, uh, starting, uh, let me say from scratch, uh, make it everything easier because uh, you can adopt new technologies. Uh, you don't have legacy, you have less constraint, uh, as I've told before. This gives you the opportunity to be faster in adopting new functionality, new technology, and to provide a better user experience. Consider yeah. that the modern technologies, uh, I've, I talked about cloud, microservices, container, and so on, are key enabler for uh, a fully developed pipeline deployment and I think that uh, the adoption of DevOps is a must if you want to increase your speed, your productivity, and the quality. And then uh, uh, I think that uh, the speed is one of the most important things to address the digital customer needs for, for, for all your service that you provide. So going back from the beginning, I think that starting from scratch, starting uh, as a spin-off, in, the, in technology, because maybe if this is not true for everything, but if we still focus on the technology, I think that help you so much to, to at the end provide a better user experience. And in this digital arena, this is a key factor. And so uh, I, I think that it, it, it's, it could be a good strategy for, to, to arrive yeah. uh, and to compete. As I've said, now we are focused on the tech because uh, uh, on other components, on other aspects, maybe this is not only, uh, this could be also something different because, okay, uh, making a spin-off means also having a new brand, having a new organ uh, to build a new organization and so on. So banking is not only technology, well, tech is important, but banking is also uh, human interaction. Or, uh, have the or the capability to satisfy the need of your customer and so uh, this is something different from the technology yeah now i know adelina temenos has, has had a lot of experience with these spin-off banks and and i'd love to to know your perspective on them as well you know I, lorenzo obviously came at it from a very strategic point of view there and and looking also at the tech side of things so how does Temenos fit into that that mantra of enabling these spin-off banks? Well, first of all, let, let me say I, I don't I don't think it's um, it's 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 obviously um, easy operating in this environment at this particular time for uh, for, for for banks. Um, it's uh, 
it, it's a very fine balance that I think needs to be achieved between that operational efficiency um, impacts that, um, that that technology can have, um, as well as on improving customer experience. So it, it almost they they almost sound like they would be at odds with each other. Um, so therefore, that balance to achieve, I think it, it can be it can be quite um, quite quite tricky. Um, for me and, and for us at, um, at Temenos, I think it, it just goes back to looking um, at, um, at technology as a key accelerator to optimizing that, that customer experience, whether we're working with, with neobanks or challenger banks or, um, or well-established and traditional banks. Yeah. The, way, the way we look at it is that we have an opportunity to, to help um, our clients really embrace digital as you know as a new normal as a way to 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 interact with their uh, with their customers um on a on a daily basis there are customers that uh, we all I, would, I think we probably all know that um that would pick up the the phone and do their banking exclusively on their phone these days i have yeah. I, I know that personally i haven't set foot in a in a branch in a really 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 long time <laughs> Um, you can either go either in, in your uh, <laughs> lunch break or not on the weekend, so yeah. Or, <laughs> or not at all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think the second aspect um, is that um, it goes back to something um, uh, we've, we've all touched on, I think, is really strengthening those relationships by utilizing to the best of our ability that plethora of data that is now available on um, on on the end consumer on the end customer by providing them um, with by providing ourselves as as you know as a bank if you want with yeah. deeper insights based on the technology that, that that we have, but also not stopping there, democratizing if you want those deeper insights by sharing them with the end consumer to help them with their financial goals because at the end of the day those financial goals are deeply uh, rooted in in some emotional decisions that they need to make. So I, I get back to, to that point as well. Um, and thirdly, is um, the way we look at it again, is, is that anywhere customer experience that really um, sort of wraps around um, everything, whether I'm, I'm here in my home office talking to you today, or I might be on a train into London next week for, for meetings, I have the same the same experience with uh, with 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 my bank, with my work environment as well, with everything I'm, that I need to do. So I'm not I'm not locked in uh, to anything. And technology is, is obviously a massive enabler of that. Um, and maybe the final point on that is that we also understand that that technology is not is not everything. It goes back to considering the uh, the customer. It goes back to considering the cultural and the change management aspects that that come with uh, with adopting new technologies. So, um, yeah, it's it's not it's not easy being a bank. <laughs> no, no, it is. I mean, I've spoken with a number of banks that are operating multinationally and having to work effectively. I, I think Lorenzo, you were talking about this you know the fact that google can never shut down neither can a bank you need always need your money you always need access to your money um and and some institutions because of time zones aren't just working 365 days of the week 24 7 they're actually working more than that because obviously they're working through time zones that have gone into different days at the same time as as ones that have yet to enter into that day now We've obviously been talking very top down. We've been looking at how the banks can survive, but then also thrive in an industry wide perspective. But I want to hear how Freedom has done it as well, because I know you guys have had such success in the digital environment. So, Lorenzo, you know, can you tell us uh, our audience a bit more about the credit map and what were the goals when when you first started drilling down into what you wanted to achieve? Uh, so when we start the, the project to the, deliver the new mobile application uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we had in mind uh, some uh, goals, techno some technological goals that, were the, that should have been key enabler for the business. Uh, from technology goals, uh, uh, goals uh, I think that one of the most important things was the uh, ability to integrate uh, the third parties. So our oh. idea is, okay, we have to build an application that is easier <laughs> to uh, integrate with third party services, component, SDK, and so on. Uh, we want to increase the control 
of, of the technology because uh, uh, we changed our strategy and so the idea is okay now we want to keep in control of the technology we want to understand exactly what has been developed in, a, in our application we have to be able to to manage directly uh, the line of codes uh, and so this was another uh, important goal for us and uh, at the end of course uh, one of the other uh, very important goals for us was to increase the delivery capacity because uh, it was <laughs> obvious uh, that in this year and especially in the future uh, is important to have the ability to let me say delivery uh, new functionality delivery new service to evolve your applications uh, and so on so it's uh, to, to do this uh, is it, crucial it's fundamental to increase yeah. your capacity and, and capacity means not only how many people are working on the application, but uh, how you are able to uh, take the decision to put in place something, let me say, and to give this to, to your customer or a subset of your customer to try. But I, I don't know if Fabio, you want to add something because uh, I, I focus on mainly on the technological aspect, but was not only the, the important thing that we yeah. uh, adopted yeah. the very very in a very fast way from a business point of view uh, it's an app uh, that has really to target us towards uh, a new service model or rather an evolving service model an ecosystem service model as i mentioned it earlier uh, an app that uh, really enables to uh, a new way to customer engagement and to a full uh, omni-channel model. In fact, uh, an import, an, a, a very important information about us, uh, about Credem, is uh, uh, we have to remember that our business model is, uh, com is a commercial banking and strongly uh, human-based relationship business model. Uh, we want to strongly push the values of our stores in uh, the local territory, Italian territory. But uh, uh, the very key factor for us is the mix between digital and human. And this app is, uh, uh, I, I always say that uh, for me, this app is the real remote control of our omnichannel business model. And then I think it's the best synthesis I can do about it. Yeah, I, uh, it's so critical now, and and I, I I know I brought stuff earlier, but I'm really loving this kind of this customer centric view of banking, and it, and it's it's being born out of innovating, but not innovating for innovation's sake, innovating because you want to help your customers be able to create and look after their money whenever they need to and however they need to. So Fabio, with that in mind, when when you looked at the the customer experience of using the app, you know what was the most important part for you was it was it i know you've you've brought up the omni-channel approach earlier um was was it that fact that they can make their really big de financial decisions in store and then their smaller day-to-day -day ones on on the app yeah yeah i think customer experience uh, uh, it's uh, it's a key success point because often the, the, if, if we think to the banking business models uh, often the, the products related to the offering are similar, are the same. The difference is the, how can I say, the simplicity, the convenience of use for customer. In other words, digital channel, for example, our app, are an instrument and they must be as effective and efficient as possible for customer to engage them. Moreover, when we talk about digital experience, Doug, it's essential to keep, uh, uh, to keep in mind the customer are uh, increasingly making a comparison, as we said before, mm. with, with, with the giants of digital, uh, yeah. with other sectors that now are always uh, and daily with them, with the customers in their, in their daily lives. And uh, uh, offer a great customer experience is... Uh, a fundamental target uh, is uh, is one of the most important goals if you want to make the real business uh, now. Yeah, it's it's a it, that's also been a concurrent theme is is the competition is so fierce now. It is not fun to be a bank. You guys do it because you're helping people out. 
um, you're playing against the Amazons, the Googles now, and the Apples. It's it's a very, very interesting and dynamic ecosystem. Now, I've got to close the VA here, guys, but before we do, I always like having a kind of crystal ball type question, a futurist question. And Adelina, if I could come to you first, you know, you've got the perspective of so many different institutions from around the world. Will the banks that don't transform in the ways that like Credem have ultimately fail very quickly in this ecosystem? Um, I think, well, you're, you're, you're starting with a tough question and you're ending with a tough question, are you? <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's for the consumer and for the businesses that these banks serve at the end of the day to, uh, to decide that. And I think uh, if we look at all the hints around us in terms of, of the choices um, that, that uh, the market is, uh, is making these days, um, particularly after the pandemic, particularly in the wake of, of this digital acceleration that, that, that we have seen and we have you know, um, thankfully lived through, it, it will be up to um, to, to the consumers, uh, to each of us as individuals, as, as as clients and as customers of these banks, to uh, to, to decide what um, what we are here to do is to is to provide um, you know uh, probably a small part of the um, of the, the um, hopefully the, the the source for success. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for organizations like Credem, um, like many of uh, of our other um, clients um, that uh, that have taken a path towards uh, towards customer centricity, and really focusing on on customer experience and and what they at the end of the day uh, provide uh, by way of uh, of interaction with uh, with their with their um, end markets, whether it's you know as I said, retail banking business banking or, or corporate banking across the across the uh, the, the realm of, uh, of banking services. Yeah, I mean, I've really been impressed by this whole conversation. All I've heard is customer, customer, customer. Um, and it's so brilliant to hear that, that all three of you are really typifying this and and this move to the, the industry to actually servicing people with their very, very important, often their life savings, everything like that, at the, you know, buying their house, it's just incredible. Guys, we've come to time. I just want to say a massive thank you, all three of you, for, for, for joining us here on the virtual arena. Um, I, hope, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves too. Um, now, with that in mind, I've also got to say a big thank you to our viewers as well, because you can catch the rest of the series and much more over at ffnews.com and, of course, YouTube, but especially LinkedIn, where you'll see me in the comments and hopefully these guys too. So a big thank you to Adelina, Fabio and Lorenzo. Have a lovely day and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.